everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and I like to talk about books and today I'm gonna to be talking about my least favorite books of 2020. Some of these are gonna be new releases and some of them are going to be backlist books and I'm gonna to try to go in the order of books that I didn't like the least to the most. It's like best to worst, but even the best is not best you know what I'm saying? And I have seven books to talk about today, so let's get started. The first book I have to talk about is The Girl from Widow Hills by Megan Miranda. This was my first Megan Miranda book, and I haven't heard great things about her thrillers, so I wasn't expecting anything too exciting from this one. This is a story about a girl who went missing when she was young. There was a rainstorm, and she got swept away, and so she was missing for a couple of days, and then she was miraculously found. Her mom ended up writing a book about the experience, and she became very famous for that, and it follows the girl 20 years later as the anniversary of her disappearance comes up weird things start happening again the media is becoming interested in her again she starts sleepwalking again and she wakes up beside a dead body honestly the premise doesn't sound super interesting to me anyway so i probably should have known i wasn't really gonna like this i only gave it two stars i listened to this one on audiobook and it was really just the type of thriller that you listen to in the background and you don't get too invested in i thought the story overall was pretty boring and slow i wasn't interested in any of the characters. I would call this book just lackluster in general. It just was kind of dull all around. I was not super surprised by the plot twist. I didn't find it super interesting. And I think I'm finding that I'm not very interested in memory loss thrillers because the whole time she is trying to kind of piece together what happened to her when she went missing because she can't really remember the whole thing and she's having these sleepwalking episodes and flashes of memories. And so the ending, the big surprise ending is pretty contingent on just recovering that memory. I'm not saying that's like a really easy thing to do to recover your memories when you have traumatic memory loss, but as a plot device, it's a pretty simple flip to switch. Everything that is hidden from us is only hidden because our character can't remember it, rather than it being hidden by some kind of complex web of lies or secrets or mysteries that I find really compelling in thrillers. So I wasn't really set up to really enjoy this one, and so I didn't. <laughs> Next up is another thriller that I only gave two stars and that is Lies She Told by Kate Hollihan. The notes that I wrote on this book just say boring as heck, poorly written. So I don't remember a ton about it, but I clearly was not very interested in it. Oh, okay. I remember. So this is a book about a novelist. And so you're reading her story, but you're also reading her character's story. So it's a book within a book. You're reading the book she's writing while also reading her story. And the big problem I had with this one was they were so extremely similar. And I think it was intentional that they were supposed to have very similar stories so that you would get confused, but I didn't enjoy that experience. I was just confused. <laughs> So the main character is Liza. She is a novelist. Her career was great, but now it's kind of on the downhill. She's struggling to start a family, but her husband is too distracted by the disappearance of his best friend, Nick. So she's really stressed in her personal and professional life. She escapes into writing about her character, Beth. Beth is a new mother. She thinks her husband is cheating on her while she's at home caring for her baby. And so she tries to catch him cheating on her. But before she realizes what she's doing, she's tossing the body of her husband's mistress into the East River. And then the lines between the fiction story and her reality begin to blur. So I do think it is intentional that you're supposed to be confused. There's even more in this plot, but I feel like sometimes with thrillers, you don't want to hear all this. If you really don't want any spoilers, maybe skip ahead just a little bit as I finish the synopsis. But the lines between her fiction and reality blur. Nick, the missing best friend, his body is dragged from the river that her character threw the mistress into, and then her husband gets arrested for his murder. So she has to figure out like, why did I write that? And then that happened, like, how is this all connected? I think it sounds interesting, but it was really just confusing and really boring. I didn't like the ending. The plot twist wasn't great for me. Domestic thrillers are usually not my thing. I usually like to read them for entertainment value only, and I'm usually not expecting them to be great. Like domestic thrillers are typically a three star read for me, but this one didn't even provide me with much entertainment. I just didn't really like it. Next up is another two star read for me, and that is the graphic novel Bloom. 
I heard so many good things about this. People were giving this five stars, said it was amazing. It's a book set at like the beach about these two boys who work at a bakery and fall in love. And it sounded like it was gonna be a really cute, fun time. The art style is the same sort of blue palette all throughout. So I was really thinking this was gonna be good. I did not like this. I have many complaints. Honestly, I'm not sure how so many people like this. I could not root for this relationship in this book at all. This is just like teenage drama and toxicity that I'm not interested in. And surprisingly, the main character was the toxic one. Usually if I'm reading a romance book and I don't like it because I don't like the relationship, it's usually like the secondary character that I don't like. And it's something like a toxic story about a bad boy who's like a little bit controlling, but the girl finds that interesting. But in this one, the main character was the one that I thought was so toxic. So our main character is Ari and Ari works at his family's bakery. He doesn't want to, he wants to move to the city. He wants to go with his band to the city and move on from this small beach town bakery life. So he looks for a replacement at the bakery and that is where we meet Hector. Hector comes to work at the bakery and so Ari has to like train him up before he can go. Then they start to have feelings for each other and oh my gosh, Ari was so controlling and weird and obsessive and Hector deserved so much better. Generally, I think Ari just sucked, but there were also a couple instances where he was like trying to control Hector and like make him feel guilty for going to see his friends back home. Then there was also like an incident that goes on in the bakery and he blames Hector, even though it was definitely also his fault and that makes Hector lose his job. That's not a good relationship, people. <laughs> Another thing that I thought was a problem with this book was there's just so many unanswered questions and unexplained plot threads. Like for a lot of this book, Ari's parents are talking very vaguely about something and it seems like they're gonna get divorced, but then nothing happens with that. And then there's also always this thread of the bakery like losing money. They're running out of money, they might have to close down, but it doesn't feel like they're doing anything to try to fix that. They're not doing anything to try to raise money to keep the bakery alive. And that just felt like a missed opportunity for plot. Another terrible thing with Ari is his friends suck and his friends are rude to Hector and I just I enjoyed nothing about this except the art style the art was great the art looked amazing the story sucked next I have another two-star book as you can tell it's pretty rare for me to give anything lower than a two-star so a lot of these are two stars this is a thriller that I listened to an audiobook called Emma in the Night by Wendy Walker my notes for this book say boring messy gross just a messy bad family being exposed didn't really care for this at all. I heard really good things about this and oh my gosh, it's so overhyped. So this is a story about these two sisters who go missing. Three years later, one of them returns and they're trying to figure out what happened to the other sister and like get the story out of this girl so they can figure out what's going on with Emma. So you're piecing that together. If I'm remembering correctly, you also get the perspective of the psychotherapist who's involved on the case, which I didn't feel like was super necessary. There's really not a lot to say about this book without spoiling what it is. My basic complaints are, I don't really like thrillers that are just exploring messy, gross, weird family, things going on, which is kind of like what Lisa Jewell does. And recently I've been discovering I don't really like Lisa Jewell's writing anymore. So if you've read any of Lisa Jewell's stuff, think of that kind of style. Yeah, I don't have much to say about this one. I just didn't really like it. Next up, another two star rating, Normal People by Sally Rooney. I read this for the same reason many other people did this year, and that was because it was being adapted into a Hulu show. And this was one of the most pointless books that I've ever read. This is about two characters who meet in high school, a boy and a girl. The boy's mom does like the cleaning for the girl's family's house. So that's how they get connected. So there's like class differences between them. And it just follows their relationship as they are on again and off again and on again and off again and on again and off again throughout college for like five years. I can't talk about this one without spoiling it. So if you don't wanna know how it ends, skip to where you don't see the spoiler bar anymore. But this is so annoying to me how it ends and literally nothing happened, nothing changed. There are just on again, off again, on again, off again. There's no growth, there's no character arcs. They don't end up like in love together or super, super apart. It just felt like the most pointless story to me ever. I also did not really enjoy the Hulu show. I liked the way it was produced and the way it looked 
looked and felt and thought the aesthetic was nice. But again, same issues as I have with the plot, like nothing happened. I just don't know why this book gets so much hype. There are far more interesting fiction books out there. Another boring book that I have is Topics of Conversation by Miranda Popkey. I believe this is a debut book. It is very short. It is only under 200 pages long. I can't really describe to you what this book is about because I don't even really know. We have an unnamed narrator that we're following as they have all these conversations with women, hence the title Topics of Conversation. They're just, it's literally just like overhearing random conversations the whole time. They talk about desire, disgust, motherhood, loneliness, art, pain, feminism, anger, envy, and guilt in language that sizzles with intelligence and eroticism. This is one of the most forgettable books I've ever read because there isn't a plot. It's really just listening to all these conversations. I don't remember much about it. It was just pretty pointless. I thought it was well written, so I think this author holds promise, but this is a very unique book that has a very niche audience that would honestly probably be similar to the types of people who like stuff like normal people. And the last book I have on this list, it is my most least favorite book of 2020, and that is Supermarket by Bobby Hall, aka Logic. My notes on this book say, trash, trash, trash. Worst book I've ever read, disgusting, written like a 10 year old boy's fever dream, cheap, dumb. So do with that what you will. It seems pretty fair to say this is a book that probably would have never gotten published had it not been written by someone who was already famous. The story is about a guy named Flynn who is pretty depressed. He's recently been dumped. He doesn't really have a purpose in life. And so he decides to go work at a supermarket. He's also working on writing a novel and his novel takes place in the supermarket and includes the characters that he meets. So it's sort of meta. And then about halfway through, maybe a little farther, there's a big plot twist that is even more meta and it's just not good. This is described as a darkly funny psychological thriller and I just, I don't know who would think this is funny. It's so bad. It's so hard for me to talk about this book because I dislike it so much. This is one of the books I've disliked the most ever out of anything I've ever read ever. The writing style is so immature. It literally feels like you asked a fifth grade boy to write a diary entry about what his dream was last night. And it's like that for the entire book. It's just gross. There's like offensive language used and there's a lot of stereotypes and it's just bad. It's just bad. I usually don't recommend that people stay away from books. I usually say, you know, there's an audience for everything and you can read what you want to read. I would not recommend this book to anyone. I can't think of anyone that would find joy in reading this book. And I'll just leave it at that. So that's it. Those were my seven least favorite books of the year. It was honestly kind of hard to pull together even seven of my least favorite books because I didn't read a lot of stuff that I really didn't enjoy this year. I'm also going to be posting a video soon on my most disappointing reads of the year which I categorize differently from least favorite things. And I had way more disappointing books than least favorite books. So I'll have a lot more to talk about in that video. Then you can also expect to see my list of the best books of the year. So you'll have a wrap up on the entire spectrum of what I read this year. Let me know in the comments if any of the books I mentioned are also ones that you dislike or if they're some of your favorite books. And also let me know what your least favorite books were that you read this year so I can know what to stay away from. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. What? <laughs>